This training video will show you how to safely launch your boat from a beach. Beach launching is anywhere that pontoons don't exist. The main difference between beach launching and pontoon launching is that it's normal to hoist the sails on the beach before the boat is put into the water. Before launching, first you need to establish where the wind is blowing from. To help you judge where the wind's coming from, you can use a masthead burgee, which will point towards the wind. Flags ashore are another indicator. Ripples on the water also blow from where the wind is coming from. When learning, try to avoid launching when big waves are present, as they can easily knock the boat over as you leave the beach. If you're sailing on the sea, you must establish what time high tide is. This information is available online or in your local press. The wind can be blowing onto the beach, which is called an onshore wind, parallel to the beach, which is called cross-shore wind, or away from the beach, which is called an offshore wind. A seaweed mark on the beach is a good indication of where the water can rise to. It's important to park your trolley above the high water mark to ensure it's still there on your return. Let's look at launching where the wind is blowing onshore. This is also sometimes called a lee shore. In this situation, when you face the water, you should feel the wind blowing onto your face. And it's also the hardest to launch from, as the wind will always try and blow you back ashore. Position your boat on the beach on its trolley with the nose of the boat pointing towards the wind. Rig the sails. Make sure the main sheet is completely slack to allow the boom to flutter in the wind, which keeps the sail loose with no power and stops it from blowing off the trolley accidentally. Also, make sure the kicking strap is slack. Fit the rudder and fit the safety pin. Check all drainage bungs are in place to stop the buoyancy tanks from filling with water as you sail along. Next, introduce the boat to the water, keeping the bow head to wind. This will keep the sails flapping and make manoeuvring easy. Continue walking the boat into the water until it floats off the trolley. Ask a friend to park your trolley ashore above the high water mark on the beach. To help keep you stable, push the centreboard down, but only by a few inches to stop it hitting the bottom when in shallow water. Push the rudder down a few inches to allow the tip of the blade to make contact with the water. Grab the tiller and main sheet and now you're ready to go. Keep a good lookout to make sure your path is clear from other vessels and pay particular attention to any swimmers or other water users in the immediate area. With the nose of the boat pointing head to wind like this, you'll be in the centre of the no-go zone and unable to sail. To get sailing, push the nose of the boat out of the no-go zone onto a close reach point of sailing. To understand more about this subject, see our points of sailing video. This sailing angle allows you to sail easily from the beach and avoids the possibility of becoming stuck in the no-go zone and being blown back ashore. The helm turns the boat away from the no-go zone, then climbs aboard, quickly grabbing the tiller and main sheet. Gently pull in the mainsail a little bit to get moving, but as the rudder isn't fully down, you should leave the beach slowly. Once adequate depth has been reached, release the main sheet so that the sail flaps to stop the boat and lower the rudder blade fully. Then secure the downhaul rope to keep it in position. Finally, lower the centreboard to suit your point of sailing, pull the sail back in and sail away. Let's now look at this with a racing fleet. Here, they're adopting the same procedure. Boats are parked on trolleys with the nose or bow of the boat pointing into wind. The sails are hoisted and the rudder fitted and bungs checked. The boats are led into the water nose first and floated off the trolley. The trolley is then parked above the high water mark. It is possible for one person to hold two boats in the water while the other person parks both trolleys. To help keep you stable, push the centreboard down, but only by a few inches to stop it hitting the bottom when in shallow water. Push the rudder down a few inches to allow the tip of the blade to make contact with the water. The helm turns the boat away from the no-go zone and smartly hops into the boat, quickly grabbing the tiller and main sheet. 
slowly sail away from the beach until deeper water is reached, where the centreboard and rudder can be fully lowered. Here is the cross-shore procedure. Park the boat with the nose or bow of the boat pointing into the wind. You'll be pointing parallel to the water in this situation. Hoist the sail, keep the main sheet slack, fit the rudder and check the drainage bungs are fitted. Walk the boat into the water and float it off the trolley, keeping the bow head to wind. Get a friend to return the trolley ashore above the high water mark. Meanwhile, you can take the centreboard, put it in place and push it down a few inches. Then go to the back of the boat and push the rudder down slightly so the tip touches the water. Turn the nose of the boat out of the no-go zone and onto a beam reach point of sailing, like this. Check the immediate area is clear of any water users and swimmers. Grab hold of the tiller extension and main sheet and climb in. Pull in a small amount of sail to allow you to slowly sail away from the beach. When the water is deep enough, slow the boat down and lower the rudder. And half lower the centreboard to suit the beam reach. Then pull in the sail and sail away. This is what to do with an offshore wind. With this wind direction, you must be very wary of an additional hazard. It can be deceptively sheltered on these beaches as the wind is blowing away from you and is often sheltered by immediate buildings. The launch area can look very flat and safe, but a short way off the shore, it can tell a different story. Also, an offshore wind will blow you away from the shore if you get into difficulty. Therefore, you should be wary of an offshore wind and only launch if you're confident in your beating abilities. If not, you won't be able to return to shore. For more information on doing this, see our single-handed tacking video elsewhere on this site. To launch, hoist the sail, slacken the main sheet, fit the rudder and check the bungs are fitted as before, and then walk the boat into the water, float it off the trolley and return the trolley to shore. To sail away from an offshore wind beach, you should turn the boat away from the wind in stages. The first stage is to turn the boat onto a beam reach like this. Check the area is clear from other water users and climb in. To sail away from the beach, the second stage is to turn the boat onto a training run. Pull in the sail slightly and sail away. When you reach deeper water, slow the boat down and lower the rudder blade, but as you're on a training run, the centreboard should only be a quarter lowered. Common mistakes not understanding where the wind is blowing from, which will result in the boat being incorrectly positioned on the beach prior to launch. Not parking the trolley above the high water mark, which may result in it floating away if the tide comes in. Sailing away too fast before you've put the rudder down. Key learning points. Establish what time high tide is. Establish what direction the wind is blowing from, from flags, burgees or ripples on the water. The wind can be blowing onto the beach, across the beach or away from the beach. In preparation for launching, park your boat on the beach with its nose or bow pointing towards the wind and hoist the sails. When you're ready to go, introduce the boat to the water, continuing to keep the nose pointing towards the wind. Return the trolley to shore above the high water seaweed mark. To stop running aground whilst you sail away from the beach, lower just the tip of the rudder and centreboard. To sail away when the wind is onshore, use the close reach point of sailing. When the wind is cross shore, sail away on a beam reach. And when the wind is offshore, sail away on a training run. Sail out slowly until you're in deep water, slow the boat and lower the rudder and lower the centreboard to suit your point of sailing. Next steps. Watch this video as many times as is necessary to be comfortable with what is required to launch your dinghy. If required, use the script and glossary accompanying this video to help you.